All right, so welcome everybody. My name is Joanne. Um, we're doing our gentle yoga series with Muslim Space again this year. Um, so if you're watching this um, later on as a video, I'm so happy to be a part of this again. So we are going to start um, tonight's practice with a pranayama called um, alternate nostril breathing and Nadi Shodhanam. It is a wonderful breathing exercise to help fight fatigue to clear the sinuses, to help reduce headaches and stress. It can also um, activate our sinuses quite a bit. So if you're experiencing allergies, some stuffiness, especially if you're in Austin, um, this is a great uh, exercise to practice. So you might wanna grab a box of tissues or have some tissue beside you if it does stimulate the sinuses. And you might just take a moment here to kind of observe your breath in and out through the nose and see how your breath is flowing um, this evening. A couple other things, we'll just grab some stuff um, from around our house to assist in our practice tonight. If you have yoga props, great, but you really don't need them. Um, if you have a mat, fine. If you don't have a mat, you can always put a blanket down or if you're practicing on carpet, you'll have enough cushion. But any type of throw pillows or an extra bed pillow, um, and I also grabbed a throw blanket here for a little extra cushion as well. So you can bring those things into your practice. Tissues. And then um, at the end of the practice, we take a little time to just relax. So it's often nice to take a light piece of fabric, a washcloth to place over the eyes and that can also help us relax. So gather up those goodies. We are gonna start in a seated position to practice this pranayama. Sitting on the ground can be very challenging for a lot of people, including myself. So I do want us to be supported on some type of pillow cushion. You are welcome to sit in a chair. You can sit towards the edge of a desk chair or even a recliner or sofa. So this beginning part, just sit comfortably. I'm going to take uh, my meditation cushion and probably grab this pillow and blanket are about equal in size, a little support for under my knees. So we'll take a moment to get comfortable here. It's really nice to have a loose waistband in our yoga practice so that our abdomen can move with the breath. So get yourself comfortable. And at any time, if you feel like I need to stretch a leg out, then just do that. Don't worry about holding yourself when your muscles are asking to be moved around a little bit. We do wanna set up as tall as possible, regardless if we're sitting on the floor or a chair. So stretch and extend the spine. We'll take chin mudra to start here. So we'll bring thumb and index finger to touch in both hands and the other three fingers are extended. You may take your palms down or turn the palms up, whatever feels best for you and your body. Again, if you need to make any adjustments here in the beginning, feel free to do so. Start to relax the face, even closing the eyes here. Let the head just float on top of the shoulders. Let the shoulders fall away from the ears. Feel the weight of the elbows and the weight of the hands on the knees. Hi, if you're just welcome, joining us, welcome. We're just getting started. So take a comfortable seat. You can be seated in a chair on the floor with some additional support or cushion. And we're starting this evening's practice tonight with a pranayama exercise or alternate nostril breathing. So you might wanna grab a tissue or box of tissues as well. So take a moment again, just to feel your posture, the lengthening up through the spine. Try to sit evenly between the sit bones, keeping the natural curves of the spine. Take a quick moment to move through the body, letting go of any unnecessary or tension or stress we might find. And again, let the face be very relaxed. So smooth the brow, the forehead, 
Relax around the mouth, tongue, and jaw. We'll begin to observe just the natural flow of our breath tonight. And we're trying to breathe smoothly and evenly in and out through the nose. Again, if you notice that maybe you're a little congested or stuffed up, just do your best. I want us to also see if we notice a difference from one side to the other, which is totally normal, that we'll have one airway that's more open and easier to breathe through throughout our day, and it changes throughout the day. So let's just follow one or two more breaths here, centering, preparing ourselves for our practice, And then in the right hand, lift it up from Chin Mudra, our seal of wisdom or knowledge, we're going to take Nasadra Mudra. So you'll start by making the peace symbol here, and then glue the index finger and middle finger together. So the thumb, the ring, and the pinky finger are our pinchers. They're going to help us with this breathing exercise. Take that right hand and turn it towards the face, placing the two extended fingertips right between the eyebrow center, the center of the forehead. Gently rest the thumb outside the right nostril and the ring and pinky on the outside of the left nostril. To begin, inhale through both nostrils and exhale back out through both nostrils. Then close the right nostril with the thumb and inhale just through the left. Close the left, open the right, and exhale. Inhale back to the right. Close the right, open the left, exhale. That's one round. Inhale left. Close left, open right, exhale. Inhale back to the right. Close right, open left, exhale. That's two rounds, inhale left. Close left, open right, exhale. Inhale back to the right. Close right, open left, exhale. That's three rounds. Keep going. Breathe and move side to side at a comfortable rhythm for your breath and body. If you are experiencing one side more stuffed up than the other, just do your best to breathe through it. If the head or the right arm gets tired, place your left hand under the right elbow to help prop it up. And try to maintain your posture as best you can, sitting up nice and tall. And then we'll all go through one more round of breathing. There's no hurry. Take your time to complete one more round.
That last round should finish with an exhale out the left nostril. And when you've completed that last exhale through the left nostril, release the hands back down to the knees and chin mudra, our seal of wisdom and knowledge. Let the breath go wherever it wants, just flowing freely in and out through the nose. Use a tissue if needed. And then try to concentrate the mind's eye at that third eye center, the acupressure point we just created at the center of the brow. Observe any sensations or feelings and observe those things without judgment. We're not here to label anything good or bad. We're simply here to spend some time to recharge our batteries and fill our cups. And then as you're ready, just softly start to flutter the eyelids back open. We'll bring our awareness back to our surroundings here. And then we're gonna release our seat and give our legs a stretch, if we're, especially if we're seated. If you're in a chair, just stretch one leg out in front of you at a time. You can point and flex your toes. For those of us seated here, um, note which foot is in front because we're gonna come back to a seat just briefly to do some movement. And we'll wanna try to place the opposite foot in front. So if we're seated, same thing, extend one leg at a time, point and flex the feet. We can even take our hands and just Massage up and down those muscles, get our circulation moving back through the legs and give those legs a, a little TLC. They work very hard for us. And then we'll come back to a seat. So if you're cross-legged in Sukhasana, try to place the opposite foot in front or readjust your seat as needed. Continue to sit up nice and tall here through the spine and then hover your fingertips off the side of the body. We'll turn our palms up to the ceiling. Let's take another nice deep breath in. And this time we'll reach the arms out and all the way up to the ceiling. Turn your palms out and exhale, float those arms down. We'll add a gentle neck stretch here. Inhale, arms up, float the chin up and roll your eyes up. Give your eyes a stretch. Exhale, fingertips down, drop your chin to your chest, stretching out the root of the neck and look to your belly button. Again, inhale, arms up, float the chin up, look up, exhale, bring it down. One more time, inhale, arms up. This time, gentle seated twist. On the exhale, rotate to your right. Let the arms float down here. You may find your opposite knee, and there's really no weight in this backhand. The fingertips might just be grazing the floor, or if you're at a chair, you can place your arm behind the back of the chair. Continue to breathe and gently rotate to the right, to the shoulders, the neck, and the head. Again, open the eyes really wide and try to find that furthest point behind you to give our hardworking eyes a nice stretch. Take one more big breath in and one more big breath out. Our next inhale will bring everything back up to center, reach up towards the ceiling. Exhale, same thing on the other side, let's twist to our last float the fingertips down. Again, maybe we touch the opposite knee, continue to sit up tall, and then gently breathe into the twist, shoulders, neck, head, and the eyes. They're opening wide, they're looking to the furthest point behind you without strain. Big breath in. Big breath out. Next inhale, same thing. Reach those arms back up to the ceiling. Now just with one breath on the exhale, rotate back to your right. You can peek over that back shoulder, let things get a little loose. Inhale, bring it right back up to center. And exhale one more time to our left, peek behind you. Inhale, back to center. This time, turn your palms out and exhale, fingertips to the floor. 
Supa Visha Trikonasana. This will be a lateral extension for our spine. Inhale, just the right arm up beside the ear. And as you exhale, lean into your left hand, bend at the elbow for a side stretch. Do keep the low belly in to protect the back and both sit bones rooted. We'll follow our breath. So on our inhale, we'll bring ourselves all the way back up to center, switch arms. And on the exhale, we'll take it over to our other side. Big lateral movement. The inhale brings us up and the exhale takes us over. Inhaling up and exhale back to the other side. Next inhale, reach both arms up to the ceiling. We'll join the palms together and exhale the hands to our heart. All right, time to move the whole body. So again, give your legs another stretch. If you are elevated in a chair, you can bring yourself down to tabletop at this point. Again, use just a blanket if you don't have a yoga mat or add a blanket as some additional cushion for your knees if you'd like. Spread the fingers nice and wide and place the hands as broad as the shoulders. We're turning our body into a tabletop so that the arms are the front legs of the table, nice and straight and strong, and our thigh bones are the back legs of the table right underneath the hips. Have a little bit of space between your knees and your feet, and let's float the head right in line with our spine. We'll follow the breath again. Inhaling, relax the belly, lift the tailbone, and stretch the crown of the head forward and upward. Roll those eyes back up. Exhale, pull the belly in, scoop the tailbone under, look to the belly button, and round to the back, stretching the back of the heart. Follow your breath. The inhale takes you into a gentle back bend. Really important to do this extension throughout our day. And the exhale is a wonderful way to stretch the muscles of the back to help release tension, especially in the upper back. I want you to move with your breath. We don't have to move at the same pace. Try to get some of the pelvis tilting in here to help release tension out of the low back. Feel free to add lateral movements here, drawing one shoulder forward at a time. Some people like to do more of a wave-like movement or a little rolling action. So this pose is really designed to help alleviate tension and loosen things up through the whole length of our back and around the joints of the shoulders and hips. All right, meet back in a neutral position here. And then let's give our legs a stretch. So I know, um, if you're wearing socks, um, we'll keep our ball of the foot to the floor and then stretch the heel back. You should still be able to get a nice stretch here. So take the right foot back behind you from the hip, foot to the floor, and then ease your heels if you're trying to touch it to the ground. We should feel a nice stretch up the back of the calf, behind the knee. If you're tight like me, all the way up into the back of my thigh, actually. Equal weight in the hands, head should be floating in line with the spine. Take a nice deep breath in. And on the exhale, we'll bring our right knee back down and we'll switch sides. So we wanna keep our low back and hips level here. So use a little bit of core, stretch the left foot back and then ease that heel back as much as you want. So you're kind of guiding how much pressure to stretch out the lower leg, back of the leg here. Take one more breath in. And then exhale, bring that knee down. We're gonna come off our wrists, do another big stretch for our low back and our hips. So open the knees wider than the hips, wide knee blocks, and then try to touch the big toes together. And then we'll draw the hips down towards the heels. Now that might not happen for all of us and that's okay. So modification is to simply keep your hips up and drop down on your forearms and bow the head towards the floor here. Or, take that pillow or blanket behind you so that when you sit back, you have some support back there to sit on. If we're going all the way to the heels, try to then melt the heart and the head to the floor. If the head touches, continue to stretch your fingertips to the front corners of your mat. If the head needs support, stack your fist or a prop under the forehead. We want our head to be supported. You can let the shoulders be easy and soft and the arms relax down. 
or you can do a little bit more extension through the fingertips, depending what feels best for you. Keep that breath flowing gently in and out through the nose. So child pose is a wonderful pose to help reduce headaches, reduce fatigue. It helps with insomnia and stress and anxiety. So really just let the whole body feel nice and grounded here. And let's take one more breath. And then we'll float our body back up one more time to this tabletop position, stacking the knees back underneath the hips. Feel free to just stretch one leg out. Again, get the blood flowing through those knees. We'll do one more balance strengthening pose here, and then we'll take another transition. So tabletop, strong core, level hips. Right foot stretches behind the body. The strengthening part, we'll start using our low back glutes and hamstrings to lift our right leg parallel to the floor. Point your right toes directly down to the floor. We should already feel these muscles start waking up around our waist. Feel free to modify and bring the foot back down. Or if you want a little bit more, reach your left arm forward. So opposite arm, right leg, left arm, the palm faces in, thumb up. Spinal integration, a balancing and strengthening pose. Make sure the breath is nice and steady. And take one more breath in. And the exhale, bring the hand and the knee down. Other side, left foot back, pull up through the low belly to support the back. Then squeeze the muscles to lift the left leg parallel to the floor. Activate that foot, point the toes to the ground. Stay here, modify foot down, or increase the balancing and strengthening by reaching your right arm forward from the shoulder. Palm in, thumb up. And if you feel shaky here, weeble wobbly, that's totally normal. This is probably the most powerful pose we'll do tonight. But it's always nice to feel how strong we are or how much stronger we're getting. One more breath in. Exhale, hand and knee down. So at this point, you're welcome to stay in tabletop, take a break off your wrist in child's pose, or walk your hands about one hand's distance forward, toes tucking under, drawing the belly in and lifting up backwards and head down into Adho Mukha Konasana or downward facing dog. Totally optional here, this is an inversion. So we do wanna be mindful of any blood pressure or heart conditions, or if we feel like it's causing too much pressure to the head, you can always pop up and come back down. Those of you upside down and down dog, this is a wonderful way to release tension through the legs. So feel free to pedal your heels, one heel at a time. The belly moves towards the thighs and the thighs press towards the back wall of your room. The head is just floating between those upper arm bones and the heels do not need to touch. Bend the knee slightly if you have more tension in the back. One more breath here. So I have to have us try to transition to Uttanasana forward fold. So you may walk your feet to your hands, hands to your feet. This would still continue to be an inversion with the head below the heart. A modification is to bend the knees and place the elbows or even the hands on the thighs. So you're not in a full upside down position. However, if you like this, feel free to dangle the arms from the shoulders, loosen the head and neck, but keep your legs strong and keep drawing that inner belly towards the spine. That will help protect the back. One more breath here. And it's so beneficial for our brain to get some blood flow to it and just drop it down towards the ground. Now we'll all bend our knees slightly. Place your hands on your thighs with the fingertips turned in. Tuck the chin and on the inhale, slowly roll up the spine. Really try to breathe in as you come in. Now if you're fasting, your blood pressure is gonna be low. 
So if you come up and you get really lightheaded, please sit right back down. You can always join us once your blood pressure regulates. I have really low blood pressure, so um, I might experience that regardless. But once we get to standing, well, stand nice and tall and sit off. And if you need to adjust yourself, please do so. We want our feet to be parallel to each other. We want to make sure that we're not just jamming our knees completely backwards, but that we have some strength here in the thighs. Relax that low back towards the ground. Gently draw the low belly in. The arms float just beside the body here. And again, the head is just gently floating on top of the shoulders. We'll do some standing movement with the breath and start working on a little bit of balancing poses. So these are challenging poses more for the brain <laughs> and the balance part. So make sure you're in a safe space. You can always use a wall as well. So from Tadasan, turn your palms out. Inhale, reach your arms out and reach them back overhead. Now my hands will get cut off here, but I'm just reaching them straight up towards the ceiling. Turn your palms out and exhale, float them right back down. That's the movement in the arms. Now we'll add the balance. So as you inhale this time, reach out and up, try to lift your heels up. So you're rising up on your tippy toes. And then when you exhale, palms down, arms down, and lower the heels down. Keep going. Again, move with your breath. We don't have to be moving necessarily together. The inhale, we rise up, palm tree pose, like we're growing our branches towards the sun. And then exhale, gently coming back down. Let's try two more of these tonight. This is a really nice way to stretch out the body, especially if we do lots of sitting throughout our day. One more. And then exhale. All right, so we're gonna take this up a little bit into another balancing. This will be a single leg balancing movement. Inhale, arms back up. Bring the palms to touch and exhale the hands to the heart center. Take your weight into the right foot and leg. So our right leg's gonna be nice and strong and push it into the ground. When you do that push down, you should feel like your left leg gets a little light here. We'll start to play with the balance by lifting and lowering the toes. Again, you're welcome to use a chair or a wall. Try to float your arms beside the body, keep the face nice and relaxed, and see if we can find a hover tonight. Focus your gaze on one spot, our drishti. Now we can stay in this really soft, just kind of floating hover, or if we want some more of that strengthening, Spread your toes, spread your fingers, and use your muscles here to lift the leg up and the arms out into a V. This is Tarasana star pose, like a bright shining star up in the sky. You can add a little movement side to side if you want it, or just try to hold yourself in space and make sure that we're as relaxed through the face, neck and shoulders as possible, even though that they're working. Avoid clenching the shoulders to the ears, in other words. <laughs> Take one more big breath in wherever you are. Exhale, we'll land softly back down to the ground. Inhale, arms up, big stretch. Palms touch, exhale to heart. Focus your drishti on one spot. Take your weight into the left foot and leg and push that foot into the floor. You should feel some strengthening here around the core. This side gets a little lighter. Soften the arms beside the body. You're lifting and lowering your toes and eventually trying to hover the foot so that we're doing our hover on our tight rope here. Keep the breath flowing as evenly as possible in and out through the nose. Stay in this softer version or spread fingers and toes. Use your muscles to lift the leg and the arms out to that V into star or Tarasana pose. Be as playful as you want with these. We'll take one more big breath in. 
And on the exhale, again, just try to land as softly as possible. Inhale, both arms up, big stretch. You can even gaze upwards, a little bit more extension for the spine. Bring those palms to touch and exhale back to our center. Okay, so from here, we'll do, um, let's see, let's just come back down to the ground tonight. We won't go through another down dog because we might wanna go and find some more cushion. We will be in a seated position, but a little different looking of a seated position. So I'm gonna switch just to the smaller cushion, but I would suggest propping the sit bones on a pillow or even a folded blanket. You could take a, a throw blanket and fold it up into quarters here. So we'll make our way back down to the ground. Next pose, Baddha Konasana or bound angle pose. I actually need more height myself. Tight hips and tight low back, give yourself a little bit more lift. And then you bring the soles of the feet to touch. Baddha Konasana, also sometimes nicknamed cobbler's pose. We'll try to bring the soles of the feet to touch. You can draw the heels in towards you as much as it's comfortable. Find your sit bones. We want to keep the length of our spine. Hands try to find feet or ankles. And simply it's bending the spine and crown of the head to the ceiling and breathing here. Or if we want a little bit more stretching for the hips and the back, you may bow with the heart leading forward. So avoid rounding and hunching. The idea is to get a little bit more tilt in the pelvis an extension of the spine forward. Just be mindful of your low back. This is a great way to help release tension around the hips. Fingertips may walk forward. This is about as far as I go comfortably, but some people really like to come as close to the ground as possible. So that's up to you and your body. Wherever we are, let's take two more nice deep breaths in this pose. At any time, just close your eyes and let that mind be settled into our practice. Forward folds can also be very calming for our nerves. So had a busy day, a lot on our mind, just kind of bowing towards the ground can help release that mental stress we might be carrying around. So try to exhale it and let it go. And then we'll inhale, walk yourself up carefully. If you bowed forward, sit up tall. We'll help our knees back up and step the feet wider than the hips. Take the fingertips behind you and just gently rock the knees side to side, little windmilling action. Next, we'll move into Murchiasana C. This is a seated twisting pose. So we'll get into um, a couple twists that will help the, uh, massage the digestive system and our internal organs. So from here, bring the feet forward. Again, sit up tall on the sit bones and step your right heel towards you as you straighten and extend the left leg. If you're lifted up a little bit more high like I am, add a pillow or maybe a little support underneath that knee. We want the left foot to be very active. So I'm pulling my toes back to my shin bone. I'll use my right shin to help me sit up as tall as possible here. Take a nice deep breath in. On the exhale, take the right fingertip off to the side of the body and start to gently hug that knee into the body as we rotate and twist to our right. Keep your shoulders parallel to the floor and the chin parallel to the floor. We'll take a couple breaths here. So there's no need to rush into the pose. Every inhale, we can create some space in our body. And every exhale is an opportunity to maybe move into that space. We should feel some abdominal compression here on the right side as well. And again, those eyes, always nice to stretch them out. So open them wide, look behind you. Take one more deep breath in, in the pose. 
And on our next exhale, we will unwind. So the head, the shoulders, and the body will face back forward. Cactus the arms up and then gently bow over to your left. Just a little counter twist for the back. And then inhale up to the crown of the head. We'll switch legs. So I'll step my left heel in, slide my right leg out, a little support as needed. Activate the right leg, toes pulling back to the shin bone, gently drawing into that shin to help me sit up nice on top. Inhale, breathing. On the exhale, start rotating to my left, bringing my left fingertips behind me and hugging that knee in with my right arm. Pause on the inhale, sit a little taller, create that space. And then on the exhale, gently rotating and twisting into that space. All the way through the head, neck, and those eyes as is comfortable. Take one more breath in. And on the exhale, we'll unwind the head, the shoulders and the body, cactus the arms and gentle bow to the right. And then inhale, come back up. Let's step that other foot in and up. And it's time to make another transition. And we're gonna transition onto our back. Take your time getting there. You wanna have enough space behind you to lay down. You can just walk yourself down like so, and then roll onto the back. So make adjustments here in your clothing. If you do have ponytails, you'll wanna move them out of the way so that the back of the head can rest evenly on the ground. Adjust your shoulders. Draw the belly in and let's hug our knees in and just rock side to side here across the low back, giving it a little massage. Take the hands behind the thighs and stretch the feet up to the ceiling. Before we reach a Kalani, this is a, another gentle inversion, sometimes called waterfall or legs up the wall pose. Point and flex the feet a couple times. Use your hands to massage the backs of the knees, the thighs. Wonderful pose to do towards the end of our day to help take the effects of gravity off the lower half of our body to redirect our blood flow to our internal organs, the heart and the head. Another pose that's really wonderful for fatigue, anxiety and insomnia. Now flex the feet, pulling the toes to the shin bone. Hold the outer thighs, and then the inhale, we'll open our legs up to a V, Supta Konasana. Elbows to the floor for a little bit more assistance. This is a nice stretch for the inner thighs, back to the legs. Feel free to roll your ankles. If you think you like you want a little bit more, move the hands to the inner thighs, give those muscles a little massage, stretch them out. And then inhale, we're gonna squeeze those legs back together. And then bend your knees out to your armpits and try to reach between the legs for the feet or the ankles. This is a supine version of bound angle or cobbler's pose. Gently draw the heels towards the pubic bone, relax your shoulders down. Again, giving our hips a nice stretch. Hands to toes or finger, um, the soles of the feet from the outside or inside, or even the outer thighs. If it's not comfortable to reach to the feet for happy baby pose. Again, shrug the shoulders down. This time we want the soles of the feet facing the ceiling. Our knees are still nice and wide and adding a rock here side to side again can help release tension through the back and around the hips.
Now bring the knees together and the insides of the feet to touch. This is a supine twist. Again, help massage and activate our digestive system. Extend the arms out from the shoulders, palms down. Exhale, lower the knees and the feet to the right. If they do not easily touch the ground, place some pillows under that bottom knee or thigh. Place the right hand on the top thigh to deepen the twist. Relax the left shoulder into the ground, turn the head to the left to count the twist the neck. Close the eyes even. And relax into the twist, breathing nice and slow in and out through the nose. One more breath. Next inhale, we'll roll the head and the knees back up to the center. We might need to do a little wiggle or readjusting for our other side. The knees together, keep your feet parallel to each other. Exhale, knees to the left, add a prop as needed. Sink that right shoulder down to the ground. Left hand to top side to help deepen the twist. And the head turns the opposite direction to counter twist the neck. Couple slow deep breaths here. Imagine taking that washcloth and just wringing everything out. So letting go of any tension, any stress. Let gravity help twist the body. One more breath. Next inhale brings the head and the knees back to center. Make sure you get everything back into alignment here. And then one final pose. Drop the feet to the floor. Hug your right knee in towards the body. Interweave all 10 fingers on the shin bone or hold behind the calf or hold on to the back of the thigh, excuse me, if that's better for your knee. Flatten the left leg to the floor, slide that left heel forward. This is called Pavana Mukhasana, wind relieving pose. Again, it's designed to press in to the digestive area, ascending, descending, transcending colon, and massage our internal organs. Shrug your shoulders down, take a nice deep breath in, try to inflate the belly a little bit. And on the exhale, gently draw your right knee towards your right armpit. So instead of pulling it towards the center of the chest, let it fall out just slightly more towards the armpit. As you breathe in, back off a little bit. Try to let the abdomen rise. So we'll add some diaphragmic breathing here. Exhale, gently pull it in. You're using the strength of your hands. One more round of breath. Inhale, back off. Exhale, gentle pull, a little compression across the front of the hips as well. Inhale, release the foot, slide it out, and reach your arms overhead to stretch out the abdomen, get the blood rushing back to the body. Exhale, float your arms down, slide your left foot in, and then hug that knee in. Again, to the shin bone or behind the thigh. Shoulders are relaxed down, elbows in. Inhale. Let the abdomen rise. Exhale, gently draw left knee towards left armpit, slightly out to the side. Your right leg can be relaxed here. You can keep it active or just let it relax. Inhale, back off, belly rises. Exhale, gentle fold. One more round. Exhale, draw that knee in as much as is comfortable. Next inhale, release the foot, slide it forward. Arms overhead, big stretch. And then exhale, close those arms down, walk the feet in. Hug your knees up into the body here one more time, rock out the back.
Try to reach across those shin bones, maybe just fingertips, wrists, off of the elbows. And floating the head up, nose to knees, will also help stretch out the upper back. Once we again, feeling some abdominal compression here. And also just giving our body a hug, some love, some appreciation and gratitude towards our body and ourselves. Take a nice deep breath in. And exhale, relax the head down, drop the feet down. So it is time to move into our final relaxation, Shavasana or any other gentle pose where the body can be relaxed. I would recommend taking pillows if you grab them and placing them towards the bottom of your mat and just relax the legs over top of those pillows. Behind the knees, you can really stack pillows up. Last week I had some um, couch cushions and my lower legs are pretty high up. Add a little blanket behind the head if needed. And if you have the eye covering, feel free to place a covering over the eyes to help them relax. We'll do a little bit of our belly breathing here to move into this pose. I will guide us through a little bit of relaxation. Then I'll give us several moments to just simply be and rest quietly. And then I'll bring us out of Shavasana to finish our practice tonight. So do what you need to do with props and surroundings. Loosen up the clothing, make sure you're nice and comfortable. Rock the head out, poof your cheeks with air. Relax the mouth, tongue and jaw. Adjust the legs, maybe a little wider, closer together, however you're situated so that they can relax. Relax the feet and the toes. To begin, let's start by placing the hands on our belly. Again, we're breathing just smoothly in and out through the nose. But we'll concentrate more on the abdomen, moving with the breath. On our inhales, relax the belly completely and let it rise and expand like a balloon. On the exhale, let the belly drop back down into the body. You may gently pull the navel down towards the spine. Inhale, relax with the belly, let it expand and rise. Exhale, let the belly drop back down. You're moving at your own pace. Every inhale is an opportunity to fill ourselves up with fresh energy, prana, and air. And every exhale is an opportunity to clean ourselves out, letting go of stale old air and energy. Everything else is very relaxed. Let go of any expression across the face. Then feel free to continue with this nice deep belly breathing. Or at this point, just let the hands fall away from the body, palms up to the ceiling. Let the breath go wherever it wants. You can notice an easy, calm breath around the tip of the nose and the nostrils. If the mind wanders, gently bring it back to the peaceful breath. As we take just one more moment of today to let go, to feel a sense of surrender, 
and to simply be and breathe. So we'll gently start to come back to the natural rhythm of our breath. And then start to breathe some life back into the body. Wake up the toes and the fingertips. Gently rock the head side to side. Roll wrists and ankles. Depending where you are in space, feel free to stretch the arms overhead one more time. We can give our right side a little bit more of a stretch. That left side a little bit more of a stretch. And then spread the fingers, spread the toes, and inhale, creating as much space in the body as possible. Exhale, arms float down, walk the feet in. Hug the knees in, rock out the back. Bring the right arm beside the head, rolling all the way onto the side in Supta Balasana. Cradle the head on top of the arm and let the left hand fall to the floor in front of the heart, pausing here for a moment. And then trying to keep the eyes soft or closed, press down into the ground, bringing the body back up. We will revisit one more comfortable seated posture and take just a couple more breaths together tonight. So being mindful of our space, find a comfortable seat and sit up as tall as possible through the crown of the head. Float the fingertips out beside the body. Then turn the palms up to the ceiling. Take a nice deep breath in and reach those arms all the way up and let's gather up everything we need for the rest of our night. Turn the palms out, big breath out. Float the fingertips back down to the ground and let go of all that other junk we don't need tonight. And one more time, inhale, arms up. 
This time, bring the palms to touch. Exhale the hands to the heart and humbly bow the head down to the heart. Taking a moment to honor, love, and feel gratitude for ourselves, our bodies, each other, and remembering to be grateful for all the people that made it possible for us to practice our yoga tonight. Om Shanti 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 Hi Om Peace Peace Peace. So big thank you to those of you that made the effort to be here tonight, taking time out of your day. A big thank you to Shabana and Muslim Space for offering this and Austin Yoga Tree. So we appreciate you guys. Hope we feel a little better, a little lighter. <laughs> You're welcome, Brian. Nice to meet you and have you in class. Have a wonderful 